Uh, hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and in this short video we're going to attempt to show that the sample variance uh, is an unbiased estimator of the population variance. So what is it that we'd like to show? Uh, we'd like to show uh, that the sample variance is an unbiased estimator of the population variance. In other words, we'd like to show that the expected value okay, of the sample variance S squared is equal to the population variance sigma squared. That's what we'd like to show. Now to show this particular fact we're going to rely upon a number of identities okay, that we've proven in, in previous videos. Uh, the first identity we're going to rely upon, actually we're going to rely on a modification of it, uh, we're going to rely upon uh, the fact okay, uh, that the variance okay, of a random variable is the same as the expected value of the square of the random variable minus the expected value of the random variable squared. But more importantly, what we're going to rely upon is a, I suppose, let's say, a transformation of this particular formula, okay, uh, where we solve for the expected value of the square of the random variable. So from this particular fact here, we know now that the expected value of the square of the random variable must be equal to the variance of the random variable okay, uh, plus the square of the expected value of the random variable. Okay, So that's the first thing we're going to rely upon. Let's call that 1. Okay? Uh, we're also going to rely upon, rely upon the fact okay, that when the random variable is not x, when the random variable is x bar, we end up with the variance of the sampling distribution of x bar is equal to the expected value of x bar squared minus the expected value of x bar to be squared. And we're also going to solve this for the expected value of x bar squared. Okay? So from this we know that x bar squared must be equal to the variance of x bar plus the square of the expectation of x bar. So what we have here is that the expected value of x bar squared must be equal to the variance of x bar okay, uh, plus the expected value or the square of the expected value of x bar. Okay. So what does these two what do these two things tell us? Well, this thing here tells us, yeah, okay, let's go just going back to the first thing, uh, that the expected value of x squared Okay, let me just write it in here that the expected value of x squared is equal to the variance of x, so it's equal to sigma squared plus the square of it, the expectation of x. Now the expectation of x is simply equal to the, the population mean, so it's a uh, mu squared. Okay, so that's our first important identity here that we're going to require. Uh, we're going to require later on. Okay. Uh, the second one now that we're going to require is that the expectation of the square of x bar, okay, or the squared sampling distribution of the mean, okay, is equal to the variance of x bar plus the square of the expected value of x bar. Now once again we know now that the expected value of x bar squared is equal to the variance of the sampling distribution of the mean which we defined earlier on, or we calculated earlier on to be sigma squared over n, plus the expectation of the sampling distribution of the mean, which we showed that the sampling distribution of the mean had an expected value of mu, so that's plus mu squared. Okay. And this is our second important identity okay, uh, that we're going to rely upon. Now we've got previous videos that show this particular identity. From this particular identity here, which was shown in the previous video, we can derive this particular term here. Uh, and through a transformation, or let's say when we let, let x equal x bar, okay, we get the same identity, but across the sampling distribution of the, of the sample mean. Okay? And from this particular fact, uh, we can actually derive this particular, this particular expression here. So now we're ready to go. Okay, So what do we want to show? We want to show that the expected value of s squared is equal to sigma squared. Okay, let's just keep these two things here in mind. Okay, uh, so we want to show uh, that the expected value 
of s squared equals sigma squared. Now recall, okay, uh, let's just recall that s squared is the sample variance. It's defined to be the summation Okay, uh, of the distances between the observations and the sample mean squared divided by n minus 1. Okay, so let's take the left hand side here. So here's our proof. Okay, so the expected value of s squared must be equal to the expected value of the sampling, the sample variance. Okay, so it's the expected value of the summation of x minus x bar to be squared over n minus 1. Now I haven't put in any of the, uh, let's say, the indexes. Uh, we just, we just let's say, assume that the sigma is is indexed from uh, from 1 to n because there's n observations in the sample, okay? So this x here does have a, does have an index term, okay? Uh, but this x bar is just, it's just a constant here. It's just, it's just x bar, okay? So we also know this particular fact is that the expected value of a constant times a random variable is the same as the constant times the expected value of the random variable. So here's a constant here, 1 over n minus 1. So this becomes the 1 over n minus 1, which is just a constant, times the expected value of the summation across our observations, okay, this particular summation here. Okay, uh, this is the same as 1 over n minus 1 times the expected value of the summation, okay, of x minus x bar times x minus x bar, okay. This is the same as 1 over n minus 1 times the expected value, okay, of the summation, okay, of x times x gives us x squared, x times x bar gives us minus x bar, minus x times x bar, and we have two of them, so it's minus 2x times x bar, and the x bar times the x bar gives us a plus x bar squared. Okay, so we have to calculate this particular expectation here. Okay. Now, don't forget the sum of these particular terms is going to be the same as the sum of the individual terms, yeah? So this is equal to 1 over n minus 1 times the expected value of the sum over the x squared terms minus the sum of 2x x bar plus the summation across these particular terms here, okay? Uh, now this is just a constant here, don't forget the only index is the indexes on the x's, yeah, so this is a constant here 2x bar, so this becomes equal to 1 over n minus 1 times the expected value of the sum of the x squared terms minus 2x bar times the sum of the x terms, okay, we brought the constant outside of the summation, plus the sum of the x bar squared terms. Okay, we're nearly there. Okay, uh, let's see what else we can do here. Okay, uh, the summation of the x bar squared terms is well, there's that's just a constant. There's going to be n of them. Uh, and let's also recall another fact. Okay, is that the sum of the x's. Okay, well, let's recall this fact here. Okay, let me just move this 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 up here. Okay. So let's just recall this particular fact. We're going to recall okay, that a1 plus a2 all the way through to a n is the same as n times the mean of a. Okay? Because if you think about it, a1 plus a2 all the way through to a n all over n is defined to be the mean. Okay? So actually the sum of the x's is the same as n times its mean value. So this now becomes equal to 1 over n minus 1 times the expected value, okay, the expected value of sigma of x squared, okay, minus 2 times x bar times n times x bar, sigma x 
the sum of them is the same as n times its average okay and here we don't forget we're indexing from uh, 1 to n of x bar squared so this becomes plus there's going to be n of them summations n times x bar to be squared okay and it's this expectation that we need to calculate let's just simplify this this is equal to 1 over n minus